Welcome fathers who are looking to inspire their kids and become fearless. This is the Become a Fearless Father show and I'm your host, Klaas van Oosterhout. I'm a father of two boys, husband and entrepreneur. This show is created to teach you how to take control and enjoy the most difficult job you've ever faced, fatherhood. I'm going to keep it real and share real life experience. A heads up, there is no magic pill. You will have to put in the hours, sweat and tears to achieve victory. Are you ready to improve your health, wealth, relationships, knowledge and become the hero your family needs you to be? I know you are. So get your pen and paper ready and let's become fearless fathers together. Alrighty, let's get the show on the road. Let's go people. Um, I got the pleasure today to be live with Marcus Watts the founder of the What's Guy Fitness and father, if I understood correctly, you got one boy, right? Is that correct? I, I, uh, that was probably my godson, but I do okay. have a dog. I do have a dog, so same thing, you know? <laughs> ah, there you go. Uh, that was your godson. Okay, cool. See, I thought it was something. Um, all right, so first of all, great to have you on. Thanks so much. Uh, we immediately start hitting it off when we met each other on the 30-day challenge of ClickFunnels, which has been amazing so far. And um, thank you for getting the opportunity to get to pick your brain for the next upcoming about an hour or so. And let's start off with you sharing a little bit of yourself and sharing your story with us so we can get to know you a little bit better. Yeah, no, you know, again, you know, thanks for having me on. Um, I'm really glad that we did kick it off and I'm excited to, you know, to share with your audience any way that I can. And I really like what you're doing. So, you know, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm 34. I actually turned 35 in uh, well, no, in just a couple of days, November 1st. Nice. And uh, I grew up in Army brat, so I spent most of my life overseas. I grew up on military bases for about 13 years overseas, and I would go on. We would come back to the states, and I got a chance to do a lot of hard work, earn an opportunity to go to college on a um, scholarship, and I also played basketball. And after college. I went on to play professionally. I played uh, for about six years all over the world, Denmark, New Zealand, Portugal, South America. You know, it was just, you know, a, a lot of fun, a lot of jet setting at that time, you know, 22, 24 years old. And somebody calls you and say, can you be across the world in uh, 18 hours? It's a pretty, pretty fun life to live. Um, and but I knew the whole time that my, you know, since I was about 16 years old, I wanted to find a way to link athletics. Um, um, really, my long term goal is linking athletics with academics. So helping uh, inner city youth um, kind of find a connection between the uh, things that can that you can learn in sports and, and linking those with the hard work that you need to put in, um, right. you know, in the classroom. Yeah. And I started using basketball as a tool really to grow my credentials so I could start to break into the fitness world because I felt like a lot of people, you know, it's, it's, it's an elite group that get the chance to continue to play you know, go on and play professionally. And I really wanted to use that to my advantage. But the whole time I was always thinking, uh, you know, basketball wasn't the end goal, putting myself in a position to live the life that I wanted really was the end goal. And I would go on to open my first gym in 2013 and work with a bunch of NFL and NLB um, prospects or excuse me, um, uh, professional players. And I would actually, during that time, go through one of the darkest periods of my life where I would, you know, I was pretty much poor, you know, my business is growing, but you know, I was, you know, some days, you know, three, four days without eating or, you know, eating very little, you know, I would, I would lose my, lose my vehicle and, you know, kind of not have a car for a few years. And during the whole time, it was just about working to create, again, I, I call it my, my perfect day, you know, I'm trying to build out the opportunity to live, you know, each day the way that I, that I want to. And um, I would end up losing that gym and me and my business partner lost about 70 grand through our business partner did some, you know, a lot of things happen in business and, and I don't need to go into those things, but uh, we were kind of on the losing end of that. And I would open up another, well, I would actually partner with another gym and, you know, learned even more from that. And now I'm just on this constant journey to, uh, again, continue to live life on my terms and affect as many people as I can in the process. Nice. That sounds amazing. I like that. Living life on my terms. Yeah. That's, that's the goal, right? At least... Um, that's the way I look at it as well. That's that's what um, a fearless father represents: living life on your terms and being able to do whatever you want with your time, and making a huge impact in this world. I guess that's why um, 
we connected so well right from the beginning um, because we have similar visions and, and missions in life. So that's amazing. Thanks for sharing that, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, I know how hard it is to talk about struggle uh, and, and losing something as precious as a gym where you put your hopes and dreams in and all your sweat and tears and yeah, maybe even some blood. Um, I actually had a similar story, so that's why I uh, I can relate and um, I appreciate you sharing that. So first of all, I never do this, but um, since we got such a good connection and um, I'm actually going to be selfish, <laughs> starting off with my first question. Yeah. And I apologize to everybody that's watching this. However, you probably might have a similar situation. So um the thing is the following um i um when i went to college and even before that you know um i used to have a nice six pack it was one of the things that was proud of, of my body um used to love walking around with no shirt on of course everywhere i went and then uh you know i quit college or I finished college i should say and went to school or went to went to my first job and and you know how it goes from there you you go downhill with your health with your working out and all that stuff then i got married that even went worse then i got two kids it went even worse so definitely no more six pack <laughs> at all yeah, yeah. and um you know i must say and i was happy and, and maybe you relate to this as well i actually heard a guy that i met in one of the summer camps i did in america say you know hey uh, I'm proud as well. I don't have a six pack, but I have a six keg. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> right. I didn't get that bad, but I, 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 the the worse it got, the more I started thinking about that guy, and I'm like, I do not want to be that guy. Yeah, so yeah. I decided, you know, I got to take things back into my own hands, and I got to get back in shape. So I started working out, and I started putting all these routines in shape. And well, long story short, you know, I got back my energy. I got yeah. back to my 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 weight that I want to be at, my weight that I was at when I was in college. Right. However, after six months of working out and doing lots of exercises, I still cannot seem to figure out how to get my six pack back. Yeah. yeah. So I was just wondering, you know, what's up with that? I'm 40 years old. Is it my age? Is it my, or is it the exercise that I'm doing? I'm just wondering, what's your philosophy on that? How can I? get that back? Is it something that a lot of people are struggling with? Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to your uh, professional expertise. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's a few things. Um, it's a few things to kind of touch on. And I guess I'll, I'll start first by saying it's probably one of the most um, common questions that I get. Mm. Because when it comes down to when you're talking about like um, physical features, it's it's an external portrayal. It's it's how it's how other people look at you. Um, it's something that you can see when you look in the mirror every single day. And, and to be honest, you know, I'll always start with telling people the, the first thing is starting from the inside out. You know, I was you know some of my story. I think that you've heard it is actually right after you know around that time when I first started my gym, you know, I ended up with blood clots and um, I would be unable to train for about sixteen months. At that time, I put on about twenty five pounds. So. Um, you can look, I mean, I was shredded, you know what I mean? I was 30 years old, shredded out of my mind in better shape than when I played professionally, you know, and then I would end up with pulmonary embolism, two blood clots on my left side. And I, I tell people, you know, you can look great on the outside and be a horrible person on the inside, or you can look great on the outside and you can, you know, be horribly sick inside. And, and, and I'm a testament to that, to, to the, you know, to the latter. And when it comes, it's a very primal thing to want to want what you're describing, you know, and people are going to say at times that they don't, that they don't want that. And I don't know, is this an, is this, can you, can you curse on the show? Is, is yeah, this you can. Moment? Absolutely. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's bullshit. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a primal thing for you to want to, you know, I think first it goes deeper to examining why do people even want that? Well, like we said, we already identified that it's an external projection. And it's how other people see you. It's how you um, find uh, so, uh, in the wild with animals, it's how they're finding someone to mate. They make themselves look bigger. They make themselves look taller. They make their hair stand up, you know, um, they huff and they puff. And it's 
the first pecking order is to, to find a qualified mate, right? So to, to attract the opposite sex. And I, and I try to tell you that when you start to understand it in that sense, then I think that you can kind of start to break it down to some attainable things to where, okay, is it going to make me feel better when I get to this point? And if so, why? Right. That's the deeper side. The second, the second part of that is, like I said, going into, well, how, well then regardless of that, now that I understand what that is, how do I make that happen? And it always goes to diet first. You know, people will ask me all the time, Hey, um, you know, what exercises can I do to get a six pack, you know, to get my abs? And I'll say there, there are, there are none. The first thing that you need to do is it doesn't matter if you do 2000 sit-ups a day, if you've got a layer of fat, because you have 30% body fat, you're never going to be able to see that. So the first thing I would say is evaluating your nutrition, evaluating what you eat day in, day out, evaluate how much water you're drinking, evaluate um, your level of exercise, evaluate um, what your sleep habits are. And then all of those start to play a very small part, but at the um, foundation of that pyramid, it's going to be um, your nutrition. Mm. Nice. Um, damn, that's just, yeah. I was hoping you were going to give me, but I, I, I definitely understand. Um, I was, when, as soon as you said, you got to do the, you know, people want to do the 200 sit-ups or whatever, or whatever. Yeah. Um, I started following a guy and I started doing his, I think it's like 21 or 22 days app challenge. And yeah. it was rough, but I started like, you know, if you crunch and you try to get away to fed, I'm like, Hey, they're there they're hard but yeah they're there. that's a, that's such a good point they are there you know what i mean hey sorry for the interruption i know you're really enjoying the show just want to make sure if you're liking this information please subscribe and then press the like button and also go visit becomeafearlessfather.com you get the opportunity to share your biggest challenge at the moment as a father and it gives me the opportunity to try and help you overcome this Thanks and enjoy the rest of the show. Of course, in order for you to have more pronounced abdominals and, you know, obliques, it's, it's a lot of different facets to it, but you know, you have to have the muscular development. If you don't, you're, you'll just be a, a person with not a lot of fat and you won't really have any, any you won't look like you have any muscle. Um, but like I said, the foundation of that is, okay, well, let me reduce the fat that's on my body. And I actually have a webinar on this, but it really just takes like, I mean, I tell people normally, you know, 15 or 20 minutes a day, but doing like interval work is the, the biggest thing. If you do, you know, what's called Tabata, like 20 seconds of work, 10 mm -hmm. seconds of rest. You do that for about a total of 10 minutes, um, if you can, 20 minutes, and you can get plenty of rest. And at the same time, your intensity is so high that you'll actually, in one of those segments, one of those four minute segments, burn more fat than you would in 20 or 30 minutes of steady state cardio. So and then obviously cleaning up your nutrition with that. Exactly, exactly. So when we talk about, you know, when you're talking about nutrition, um, what are some of the, cause you mentioned like, it's always the same question and then and the apps or the, you know, the muscle definition, et cetera, is, is one of the right. uh, most questions that you get. Um, what are some of the things that you see of those people in regards to nutrition that are like, to you really obvious, but for them that are huge changes if they start implementing them. Yeah, you know, th this is a cool one to dig into because I get a mix of people who are like, you know, haven't really been doing much of anything. Some extremely overweight um, and unhealthy. And then I get other people who have been like former clients of mine or they've been in, you know, members of my gym or done my programs before and, you know, compete in bodybuilding shows and, you know, play sports and, you know, to us compared to us, other people they would look like they're in, in, in really good shape but they both of those groups both of those types of uh clients of mine will all say the same things that they didn't realize either how much water they weren't drinking or for the most part how much the excuse me the lack of vegetables and nutrient dense foods that are in their diet so you can have a you know two bowls full of vegetables and that would equal out to like one small piece of candy as far as caloric content. So they learned about, hey, what are good calories for me to take in? And they learned about, you know, eating nutrient dense foods. That's one of the first things I say, you know, if you have cravings or something like that, nutrient dense foods, so having foods that have high uh, vitamin and mineral content are going to help you to cut those cravings and then also start to teach your body to feed on stored calories, which is fat. And, and that's probably the biggest thing, man, is getting people to understand that uh, you know, the reason that your body is holding on to this fat is because 
it's protecting itself for the time when it, when it's when it's needed. You know, famine, you know, drought. You know, there's there's we don't experience it as much now, but there used to be times when people would wouldn't just be able to eat it. You know, go to the store and, and grab stuff. They had to go hunting, and if the hunt wasn't bountiful, then they wouldn't eat. Um, so people understanding, hey, well, my body's storing these storing this fat because of my caloric intake, and if I make some just make some better choices eating more nutrient dense foods, then I can start to shed fat. And then, oh, okay. So I just work out for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes a day, you know, 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest or one minute of work and 30 seconds of rest. I do that for like 15 or 10 minutes. And oh man, now I'm starting to see a change in my body. Hmm. Well, and um, just so everybody understands at what um, percentage, fat percentage are you starting to see uh, muscle definition? Okay, yeah. So, you know, it can kind of vary. They're people are going to say that there's a, an exact percentage, but since your body will carry fat um, in different places, uh, for instance, the midsection is obviously the last place that you're going to start to lose fat. Um, you can't tell your body to get rid of fat, for instance, underneath the arms, right? It's it's going to shed the fat as it as it sees fit. So it's that people would normally say that it's around, you know, 10 or 12% body fat that you'll start to see like in the arms or in this, for instance, my chest is where I'll start to see it first. Like my shoulders and my chest, I'll start to notice that I'm starting to get a little bit more vascular. That's kind of when I know that my body fat is starting to shed. And then for me, it goes to um, the biceps. You start to see, uh, you know, the vein in your biceps. And then um, now I'm starting to see them because I've, I've, you know me, I go back and forth. So like, you know, I lost about 15, well, when I got injured, I gained about 25 pounds. All in all, I dropped, I've dropped down now to about 221 pounds, but I've gone times in between where I dropped 15, gained 15, dropped 12, gained 20. And it's because I'm testing so many systems. So um, that's kind of how I can explain this to you. But for instance, I'll start to notice that I'm really getting lean when I start to get veins in my lower abdominal. So that means I'm probably starting to drop, you know, I'm either at or just below about 10% body fat or so. Nice. I appreciate that explanation. Yeah, because I try to look up, you know, how do you know at what percentage body fat you're at? And then you have to go to like these special machines. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah that's, you know, not that can, <laughs> that's another good one that I'll, that I'll tell people too is they'll kind of like, I have a scale and it reads like body fat and stuff. Like you can't mm -hmm. trust that. It's not exact. Those machines that you hold with your hand or the scales that you get on, those things are not exact. And you, you, if you really want to get a real reading, it's what's called a DEXA scan. It's, it's a little bit expensive, but it's, it's the best one. It's going to give you a full reading of what your body is, weighs in water, what you weigh in bone uh, mass and what you weigh in muscle mass and fat mass. So it'll give you that full breakdown. But in general, you know, I'll tell people just take pictures of yourself and you'll be able to clearly, you know, see, Hey, is what I'm doing working or, uh, or, you know, you know, is it not? And, you know, of course, and, and, and I'm not saying this for me, if it's not me, go find somebody else, guys, but go get a coach. You know, I pay for coaches every single month to train me and coach me just because I'm always learning and I'm looking for that accountability. Get a coach and get somebody that can at least, you know, for four weeks or, to, you know, 16 weeks, just show you the roadmap and then you can take it on your own. I Yeah, I absolutely agree. Coaching, mentors, that's, that's the best. We're going to hop into that in the, in the next question after this um because i have a question about that like how, how do you go about um you know finding a coach or etc but we'll, we'll step into that just what i want to talk to you real quick about is that um you know in regards to working out and everything i've understood um that the best thing to do is add this into you know do this as early in the morning as possible so i've implemented this in regards to my morning routine um, you know, for me, my morning routine, that, that absolutely changed everything. Like, like the way I approach it is, okay, I used to wake, wake up really late and then all of a sudden I had to rush, you know, I rush everything, get the kids up, get the kids ready. And just, it was just the worst experience ever to start your day off like that. And that would actually be like a low point, but it will only get lower from that because you'd be frustrated, stressed out, get really impatient. No, you, you see where this is going on. Huh? So what I started doing with my morning routine is like, okay, which obstacles do I have? And I 
implement everything in my routine. And one of the obstacles that I was having was like, I do not have the energy to, to make it throughout the day. So by the time that I had to pick up my kids, I was just beat. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do with them. Um, and I started implementing that. And that was what you know was so important for me as a father. So could you share with us how your morning routine looks like? Yeah, so the one thing I'll say about, about the morning routine is it, it, it can vary. So I kind of go through periods where my routine is one way, and then I'll go through periods where it kind of changes. For instance, right now, the main party for me in the mornings is the one funnel away, you know, program that you and I are in. Mm. Um, there was a time where because of my schedule, my training had to be in the middle of the day. And then when that wasn't the cause, you know, there was a time where it could only be in the evening. And then there was a time where I tried to only make it in the morning. So I kind of use that to preface, you know, giving out my routine now, because there are a couple things that you said. Number one, when you can, when you can get your workout in the morning, when you can wake up, have some coffee, um, go work out, preferably on an empty stomach, fasted. That's one of the, number one, it's one of the, it does a couple things. The reason you felt so good when you were doing that, when you worked at work, when you found a way to, to get your workout into your morning routine is one of the first things you did is you increase the blood flow in your body, which means um, your brain's getting healthy, fresh blood flow, your heart's, your, everything's getting this healthy, fresh blood flow, as well as there's an amount of uh, endorphins that come from you um, getting that workout in, right? Again, we're talking all this increased blood flow throughout the organism. Also, you feel a sense of um, success and it's like a win for you. So because of that, it's it's you get a little bit of a, a little bit of a, almost like a high, you know. It's and that's even more endorphins that are coming to you because now you feel good about yourself. You did something that you feel good that you did it. You feel good about the fact that you put in the effort and you had this kind of win. You know what I mean? So um, that's kind of the one thing for people to kind of to take into account. You know, there are a lot of studies that really show that getting your workout first thing in the morning is is going to be huge for you. Now, getting back to what you said, and I. I apologize for digressing, but um, uh, my routine right now is I'll wake up, I'll, I'll honestly try to wake up as early as I can, but this is going to depend on what time I went to bed, you know, and um, some people don't have the luxury, but again, this is why you and I are doing what we're doing. I can, I wake up when I want, I go to bed when I want. There's nights that I pull all nighters, literally the second week, the first week and the second week of our, um, of the one funnel weight challenge that we're in, I pulled an all nighter once a week, both of those nights. So I didn't go to bed until, like I wasn't ready to go to sleep until around 4.30 in the morning. So I just went and worked out. Um, so because of that, that type of stuff, I'm gonna sleep, I'm gonna come back after I work out and sleep a little later, you know? Um, other times I might just work late. So I just need to sleep because I'm not gonna get up and I can only function on, you know, two, four hours of sleep for a couple days. So right now I'll wake up, I'll, um, Check my, check my emails. I'll actually, before I do my emails, I'll try to send emails and do things that are important to me, things that I need. Um, I'll write down a list of what I want to accomplish that day after some meditation. Um, and I will then get into handling my tasks. You know, the one funnel away program right now is that main task. Um, and then I'll get into uh, handling things that other people need, you know, reaching out and seeing what my assistants left for me overnight. Um, my assistants are, are based in the Philippines. So, you know, they're 12 hours ahead. And from there, I'll, I know me, I love to get up and have a big glass of water or water with some lemon or lime juice and uh, coffee. So <laughs> I'm a big coffee drinker. I love tea as well. And, you know, there's a lot of studies where people kind of compare the two. Listen, I don't, I don't really care. I love coffee. I love the taste of it. <laughs> I love good coffee. You know, I grew up in Europe, so I've been exposed to some, some, some <laughs> really good ones. The espresso in uh Par and not Paraguay, but uh, Portugal is amazing. So I, I can only imagine in Spain. I haven't. I've only been to Spain uh, a couple times. I went to Ibiza when I was like 16, and with my family, we were on the coast when I was like 14. Nice. But um, yeah. So I, you know, that's that's really it for me. You know, it. But like I said, you know, it changes. The biggest thing is, I try to take care of myself first in the morning. You know, do for yourself. You know, try not to get up and immediately get on your phone and and check emails and take in all of this stuff that everyone needs, you know, from you, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, the meditation is, is huge. And if you don't meditate, I, can't, I would just say start. And the app that I suggest 
and it's not the, you know, the only one, but one that I've had a lot of experience with over the years is on headspace. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're not one of those people that are really into meditation, <laughs> one thing I learned is that all these people who are living the lives that I want to live speak about meditation being a turning point in their lives. So um, Headspace is a great one. It's actually guided meditation. So like, if you're like, man, I can't sit for 10 minutes. These sessions are only like 10 minutes and they guide you through the thought process of what happens when you're kind of losing yourself in thought and how to bring yourself back in and, and things like that. But like I said, you know, it'll vary a little bit. And, you know, I'm sorry if I get a little bit long winded, but I'm just so passionate about sharing like the benefits of taking care of yourself. And, and, and again, with the routines, we're saying, well, what's my morning routine? Well, it fluctuates, you know what I mean? And, and don't be afraid to, don't think it's a bad thing when, you know, that routine is kind of changing, you know, it, it's, it might morph as your life calls for it to. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I really appreciate that that you you really focus on the meditation. We haven't spoken about that at all during the uh, the interviews that we had so far, um, but I completely share your your opinion about that. Meditation has changed the game for me in regards to my lack of patience um, and and yeah, just your whole mindset. Um, I I must say I've never tried. Uh, headspace it never uh, called me i i first started on my own now i do i do a, a 20 minute plus guided meditation from mind valley which is absolutely mind-blowing i recommend that to everybody um just because it puts in everything in regards to compassion and gratitude and vision and planning your day etc it's a complete meditation however if you start then yeah it's better to start with one minute instead of trying 20 minutes because you're going nuts <laughs> um yeah <laughs> but that's beside talking about nuts and talking about what you mentioned before like it's so important to to um to get a good coach right in in certain areas of your life especially your health it's so important um what <laughs> drives me crazy is that it's so difficult to find a right coach when we're talking about health and fitness and the reason for that is what i've seen so far and i'd love to hear your opinion is that there's like you know different camps right across from each other in regards to what's good and what's not uh, you mentioned coffee, for example. You got, uh, I, I can't come up with his name this quick, but you got the Bulletproof coffee at the moment. Yeah, I'm absolutely, yeah, yeah. I, I do not drink coffee, but then he has it in tea form as well. Fantastic. But then he puts in, uh, for example, cocoa, uh, coconut oil. People are absolutely for, absolutely yeah. against. And it's like, yeah, yeah. as a person like me, that's I haven't studied it. I'm, I don't have the time to study it. But then you have those two different camps. You're like, what? which one is the right one then for me? What do I do? Which then for me, and I, I guess for a lot of people out there, it will happen that you're just like, okay, I can't decide, forget it. I'm not going to make a decision. I'm just going to let it go. And I'm just going to continue doing what I do because at least that makes me feel happy and I don't have to stress out. So my question to you is, okay, so you know, where should somebody start then and how can somebody make that decision without getting overwhelmed and getting stressed out? Man, I, first, I mean, I, I think that you're asking a lot of really good questions and I'm glad that we're having these, these, you know, this type of conversation because what you're basically, you know, talking about is it's the everyday person who doesn't have a ton of knowledge or, or even people who think that they have a ton on the knowledge and they know what to look for that actually don't and the biggest thing i can say is it kind of goes back to you know when you're talking about problem solving and, and team building you know they say that you know if, if you want to know the answer or something then ask why you know three times or seven times some people say seven times so when you're looking for a, a coach first let's 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 say that you know um when you're speaking to a coach say let's say someone's already reached out to someone okay you know, when they're asked them about what their philosophy is, you know, ask them about their background, because to be honest with you, someone else's background plays can play drastically into how they coach other people. Um, you know, 
and not to, you know, talk myself up, but, you know, I, I played high school sports and I was a standout and I played college and I was a standout and I played professional and I was a standout there. But then I've worked with 91 year old clients who could barely walk. And I've worked with seven year old kids who were still very, you know, impressionable and, and developed in their body. And then I've worked with, you know, everyone in between 40s, 50s, 60s, men's women, you know. So understanding the background of the person that you're dealing with, because if all they've done is work with higher end athletes, then that's the, probably what their training is going to be. Um, next thing is, you know, once you start, once you ask them their philosophy, start asking why and ask why at least three times. Well, why? Well, because, you know, that's how you get the muscle to respond. Well, why? Well, because, you know, at a, why, why, why? And like I would always tell my, my members at my gym, I would, you know, I would say, hey, don't be afraid to ask questions because as a coach, I should have an answer for you. Um, a program should always have a couple things, the ability to scale someone up as well as the ability to scale someone down. So if it's not enough for you, I can ramp it up. I can find ways to get you more volume without breaking you. Um, if it's too much, it's easily scalable. You know, not where someone says, well, this is the way that it's done and that's if you can't do that. What about people that can't actually, like I love to program squatting in my programs. Squatting burns more calories per rep than any movement. You're going to work more muscles. It's a fantastic movement. Now, some people physically cannot squat because they've been in car accidents or they've had certain injuries. So you need to find other ways to activate their hamstrings, their glutes, their hips, you know what I mean, their quads. Um, so a coach should be able to scale up and scale you down. And then they should be able to fully explain the long-term philosophy of their program. I like to think of myself as a, a more of a sustainable fitness coach because listen, I can make him go hard for about four or eight weeks or 16 or 20 weeks even. But what I, but what's gonna have to what's gonna happen after that? You know, how are you gonna sustain these results that you got, which is where, you know, someone will do keto and then you know, oh, they get these results. Yeah, it's because you shocked your body. Now, can you maintain that? You know, and, and I think that rolls to with anything, you know, being a fearless father. I mean, you can start out, you know, taking taking your kids to all their practices and going to all their games and, and buying, you know, roses for your wife every week and things like that. But can you sustain that? You know, what can you do long term? You know, it's not a short game. So um, that's kind of what I like to preach. And, you know, that's why I have programs for, for everybody, I have, you know, I have my, you know, killer dad bod program. You know, I have my, my burn zone program, which is. You know, strictly for people who just are looking for extreme fat loss, the killer dad bod program is you know, made just for the guys. Um, you know, I have my 10 week vegan program, which is, you know, made just for people who want to learn and see results out of their body. You know, that's a 10 week all inclusive program. So it's, you know, it, it really just depends what you're looking for. But where's the sustainability, man? Exactly. Yeah. So long term is the is the key of the game. A hundred percent. I mean, everybody wants to see results right now. And I'll have people that'll do my programs that'll lose, you know, 12, 17 pounds in, you know, in three or four weeks. Um, but they're not going to sustain those results. You know, now the wins are going to be much smaller. You know, they're going to lose, you know, a pound a week and then it's going to drop to a, a half a pound a week. And now it's, can you mentally sustain the work that it takes to keep getting these smaller wins, but long-term, you know what I mean? You'll just be, you'll just be killing it. Exactly. You mentioned mentally, right? Is that something that you work on as well? So, Because what you notice, if you go into the gym, you get your program and it's just like, go ahead and have fun. And then, you know, yeah. you, maybe they talk a little bit about what's your goal. Um, but of course, as you mentioned, also, it's all short term. So I'm just wondering then, is the mental aspect, which is what I've noticed, I mean, neglected a lot, to say it nicely, um, what's your aspect on that and how do you incorporate that in the, in the trainings? Yeah, you know, I think it's probably the most important because before you get to the gym, you have to get up and get in your car, you know? And before you do that, you have to set an alarm the night before. Or excuse me, you have to actually choose to not ignore your alarm. <laughs> you know, and before you do that, you have to set an alarm the night before. And before you do that, you have to make sure that you make enough time to get yourself in bed so you can actually get up and go to. So, so I, I 100% like what you were saying. I, I'll really stress in my programs, 
number one, not stressing yourself. So if you don't go to the gym that day or you didn't eat the way that you were supposed to, so what? Like you still have another day to learn from what you what you didn't get to accomplish and um, you know work on it the next day and compound on it the next day and the next day. Um, one of my clients, she's actually in my, she's in the second of one of our programs. She graduated, she finished one program and now she's worked to a more uh, inner circle program. And before that, she was a client of mine at my gyms. And she messaged me just the other day. She had a, a rough week last week. And she's like, she didn't get to the gym twice. She fell off of her nutrition for a couple of days. And she said that something that she had seen me say before um, really helped her. And that was to just not stress it. You know, like it happened and just deal with the fact that it happened, take it head on, maybe try to figure out why, um, and then move on from it. What can you do um, different the next time? And she's like, hey, you know, this week, I'm just gonna start the program from last week over again, and I'm just gonna go from there. And I'm like, I was really happy for it because one of the worst things that you can do besides, um, I, tell, I talk all the time about uh, don't eat like an asshole. <laughs> uh, one of the worst things you can do is, is uh, bully yourself and beat yourself up over the fact that maybe you didn't perform to a standard that you had set for yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, I, I really appreciate you mentioning that. And I think you can extend that not just to fitness and nutrition, but just in life in general, stop beating yourself up, be flexible with yourself and just pick up where you left off or even make a step back to go forward again after that. I think that's a huge message for, for everybody. And I always have to keep reminding myself for that as well, because if not, you're going to just continue to fall down. I used to be getting in the habit of getting upset and then getting upset because I was getting upset. And then, well, you see where that goes now. <laughs> Nowhere good. You know, I would say that um, if being upset about it and crying about it and um, worrying or stressing about it would actually like fix the problem, then like, cry away, like stress away, you know what I mean? But since it's not, you know, it's, it's really no use wasting time on it. Um, and an example I can use of, of to kind of uh, uh, play off of what you were saying is when I played uh, when I played sports when I was young, especially playing quarterback, you know, if you make a big mistake, everybody sees you do it. And, you know, you want people to know that you didn't want that to happen. You want people to know that you care. So you'll kind of show emotions, you know, you can drop your head or things like that. But really, that's an outward projection. Later on, when I built, when I developed the confidence, I would never waver when I made mistakes in any sport because I was like, okay, well, I've just got to do different next time, you know, and got to move on to the next play. And it's it's the same thing. It's just the playbook of life, you know. what I'm saying you got to deal with it, take it head on. There's a really good book, um, Tuesdays with Maury, um, that I would really suggest. Um, in the book, there's a there's a really good scene. The, the book's about. Um, um, Mitch Album, who's now a writer, um, he's like big on ESPN. I'm not sure where he's at now, but he started with the Detroit Free Press, I believe. And um, one of his professors from college uh, was named Professor Maury. And he was like the man's man. Everybody loved him. And years later, Maury would end up sick. So Mitch Album would go back and visit him. And he kind of chronicled that. He ended up with a Lou Gehrig's disease, which is a, you know, a very crippling disease. And he was kind of a, a shell of himself. And um, Mitch Album asked him one day, he said, uh, you know, how do you, how do you deal with all this? You know, you know, you can't go to the bathroom by yourself. You can't eat by yourself. You know, you were this guy that was, you know, like a guy's guy that everyone wanted to be. And, you know, I'm not trying to, to make you feel any worse, but I'm just wondering like, how are you doing it? And then um, Professor Maury said that, uh, you know, I wake up every day and I cry and I, I cry until I can't cry anymore. And then I move on. And I think that's something that a lot of people can kind of uh, use to, to help them out when, you know, in both, you know, the side with, you know, with your, with what, you know, the area that you deal with and, and with fitness in general, it's just, you, you just got to deal with it and then move on from it. I hear you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd like to skip for a second um, to something different because you mentioned that you've also trained uh, kids. And that just brought me back that at, uh, at the beginning of this school year or since the beginning of this school year, I'm really trying to start implementing somewhat of a morning routine with my oldest. He's five years old now. And um, so we've been trying some Tabatas, as you mentioned before, that's very good. 
Um, we're doing some, you know, online. They got all these different kind of uh, kids exercises, animal movements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Lots of fun um, for a little bit, and then he's bored of it. <laughs> um, but the thing we at the moment like the most is is yoga for kids, and the reason for that is that the lady that gives those um, exercises like 10, 15 minutes. She makes a whole story out of it, and of course. That's what he likes. He's young. But what I'm just wondering at the moment is like, you know, in your opinion, what's what's the best way to build up a workout habit for a kid? What's the right age to start with? And I think and you already mentioned that. And I think this applies to this as well, that it's important to stay flexible and not worry if you skip a day or two, but just keep continuing to building it. Correct. No, correct. Um you know, so there, there are a couple of first, I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll go over one of the most widely um, uh, misunderstood aspects of fitness with children. And a lot of people think that you shouldn't have your child lift weights until a certain age because it'll stunt their growth, which is like completely untrue. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Um, in American football, for example, or rugby, let's use rugby because you're in, you're in Europe. So in rugby, people would allow their kids to play rugby at what, five years old, six years old, right? Maybe even younger, right? They're learning the fundamentals of rugby. So in rugby, um, in American football, when two athletes are colliding into each other, the forces can be up to 10 times their body weight, right? So you're telling me that it's not okay to teach a kid to move a barbell properly or to move a dumbbell properly or to do calisthenics but it is okay to have them run into another human being and create forces up to 10 times their body weight on their joints without knowing how to properly move their hips, knees, ankles, and distribute body, you know, force, you know, amongst their body. So that's, that's the first point. You know, when you go and you, if you go look online at the world weightlifting championships, there's kids, I mean, they're five, seven, 13. I mean, these kids are strong. And I, the one thing I'll tell you is from training kids when I was, um, you know, when I first started training, you do not want a kid that has been lifting weights and knows how to open their hips and close their hips properly and knows how to press something overhead. You do not want one of those kids putting their hands on your child in a sport where it's allowed in judo or wrestling or <laughs> even in football, you know, where, where bodies are colliding. Um, and especially a sport like rugby, because um, one of those kids understands how to create force and the other one doesn't. And it's only done through repetition. The other thing is um, I was just speaking with a guy this morning, an old friend of mine, whose son is actually now playing for the number one baseball team for 11 and 12 year olds in the country. And that's doing sports that are unilateral versus isolateral. So you want your kid doing like a sport like baseball, they throw with their right hand, they step forward with their left foot, they shift their weight forward from their back hip, and then they step forward with their right leg. So when they do this over and over and over again, you're going to develop an imbalance like football players. And again, when I say football, um, I'll say American football for this. When I say football, I'm speaking about European football. Um, they're going to be stronger on their plant legs. So a right, so a right footed, um, a right footed player is going to actually have more balance and development in their left leg all the way from their ankle up because that's their plant foot. And their right leg is sl their foot slightly externally rotated. It's kind of slightly rotated out so they can make contact on the inside of their foot. So they're going to be able to create a lot more force with it from that externally rotated position than their foot turned in. So understanding that, like, have your kid do judo or actually what you were saying was phenomenal. Like those animal movements are some of the best because they're compound movements and they'll work almost every single joint. So you'll get their toes, their ankles, their knees, their hips their shoulders, their elbows, their wrists, all the way through their fingers will all get tons of work. Um, yoga is another great one because um, uh, even though kids will start out pretty flexible, once they get to about eight or nine years old, that can start to evaporate very quickly, especially with all the sitting in the video games. So um, I think everything that you're doing with your kid is, is pretty good and anything that you can do to get them catching with both hands, uh, get them tracking a ball. That's another reason that um, even though soccer players don't have the best, uh, they're not known for hands. Um, if you put a soccer player in a position where they had to track a ball down, they would they do it pretty pretty easily because they watch a ball go back and forth all the time. Um, it's another reason that um, American football players are, um, excuse me, American basketball players will translate and be very good American football players. 
um, because they touch a ball a lot and they develop that skill. So then most, fo- most football players, if you grow up playing football, you don't really get to touch the ball a lot, nor do you track a ball in the air unless you're a receiver. So in basketball, you might never play on the court, but you develop the skills of tracking a ball. So the, I, I guess what I'm getting down to is, is have your child play as many sports as possible, mimic like those animal movements and anything that's going to keep them limber and um, find a, a coach that can kind of show your child how to squat um, or teach you how to squat so you can teach your child. And don't be afraid to have your kid doing compound movements and lifting weights and lifting their own body weight for sure. Gymnastics might be, if you were, if, if I were to combine two sports, I would say, I would have my, I would go back and have my kid play or when I have a kid, I'd have my kid uh, be in gymnastics from a very young age. And then I'd have them play uh, football because you're going to develop the speed. You're going to develop the change of direction. They're going to learn to work with both feet, but in gymnastics, they're going to develop stability and in an incredible amount of strength. Great. I like that. Really elaborated and explained why exactly the different things that makes it so easy for fathers to understand what the, you know, what the next steps could be for them. Uh, in our case, as I mentioned, we try to do yoga every morning if possible. Um, for me, Keeping the game is, is so vital too, man. That's so smart that you're doing that. It's gotta be a game. I mean, they're kids, their, their attention span is gonna be short. And you, and you want them to enjoy exercising. That's where I, I speak to a lot of coaches and I'm sorry to interrupt you. I speak to this about, I speak about this to a lot of coaches and that, See, when you do sport, they make you do push-ups and they make you run as punishment. And then so now there's a connotation that doing those things when you don't have to do them, it's not fun. So you want to make exercising fun. You know, some of the some of the most athletic kids that I see coming up now, you know, five, six, seven years ago, they were inside the gym with their parents when they were very small. So they built a connotation with the gym being, or excuse me, an association with this is a fun place. This is a place that all the cool people hang out, you know, and, and so they, they're going to grow up with that type of association with health and fitness. So you're, you're just enabling your child in the right direction. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a perfect example of what I'm trying to achieve step by step and <laughs> bumping my head a lot of times, but it's a lot of fun. It, it's also fun to do it together because it, you know, it, it's good for our connection and, and building up our relationship even stronger. So I'm definitely enjoying it. Um, they, outside of this, they also go to um, karate classes uh, twice. Again, again, yeah, another very good one. Yeah. And and other than that, um, they used to go to English, but I, I changed that because we speak a lot of English at home already. And my level of English is way better than about 90% of the Spanish people. So yeah. yeah. Um, we change that. They, they go painting now. So they go art classes to, to, to work on that creative side of, of theirs and their development of that. So, um, so I really appreciate that. Um, we're getting close on time and there's two questions I definitely want to talk about. So yeah. I'm going to try and keep it short. But you mentioned before um, in regards to, you know, people need to eat nutrients, dense foods um, to work on the cravings. Now, I, I've noticed that that's going a lot better and I can have some foods that are not so good for me, but are nice for the kids and they like to eat it um, without me <laughs> eating it before they come home. Uh, however, um, if we go visit my mother-in-law, uh, which we do often lately, just because of the sad fact that she, she uh, has cancer and we have no idea how long she's going to, um, you know, how long we have the pleasure of enjoying our presence. Right. I want to be there as much as possible. Problem is that there she's trying to be as good for the kids as possible. And freaking fridge is just stocked with chocolate drinks and chocolates. And I love chocolates. <laughs> I don't think there's many people that don't like chocolate. And how do you deal with the fact that you have a fridge that's so full of all that stuff? That's so bad for you, but at the same time, just draws your attention and just brings up that craving. Um, how do you men- do? You have like a mental trick or something that could help. Well, in this case, me, but I'm assuming a lot of people to say, "Look, it can be there." And I know my first case. That's what I did at home. I took everything away, so it's easier. But what if it's not? How? What can? What kind of tips or tricks do you have that I can deal with that? 
Yeah. So, so first it's, it's like you talked about, just get rid of the, just get rid of the option, you know, the possibility that it even becomes an option. Um, we, in one of the, in all my programs, I have like a checklist, which is like, you know, preparing your fridge, kind of cleansing your cabinets, things like that. But outside of that, say you're somewhere that, again, like you can't control it. I think the first part is understanding that uh, the fact that you're craving these things or you want them is probably because you're not hydrated. You lack micronutrients, again, essential vitamins and minerals, or, you know, something else is, is coming into play. It could be stress. It could be not getting, and, and there's a, tons of things that could play into it. But understand that that's your body's way of speaking to you and telling you, hey, we want this because we need it to function right now. And, if, and again, that's where we want to replace it with the micronutrients. And the other part of that is um, maybe if you're going to, you know that you're going to go there, right? And you know that you're going to go there Thursday. Maybe you're going to save some calories by not eating as much, you know, earlier that morning um, and getting an extra workout in. So that way, you know, hey, I got my workout in, I saved some calories. And so if I do want to go there and have these things, then you know what, I can have a few and I'm going to reward myself. I used to follow a principle from Hulk Hogan. And that was, he said that he would, um, go, he would, uh, go to, whenever he came home to Key West, he would always go to Key West and he would, um, when he got off the road, he would have this massive, like huge ice cream sundae. And, but he would eat clean the whole time. He would do everything that he was supposed to for weeks and weeks and months at a time, because, and that was the reward that he was looking forward to. So I'll tell, I would tell people, Hey, give yourself, you know, uh, three meals in a week that you can enjoy yourself make it, you know, you can have an entree, a dessert, an appetizer, a snack, or a drink, but you can't have any one twice. You know, and um, save those. Maybe you save them for all for Friday and Saturday, or all Friday, or maybe have them throughout the week. And it's an easy way to like um, feel like you're not restricting yourself. Because I like to tell people to just eat, just eat. You know, just just make better decisions when you do it. So great. Thanks for that. I'm going to try and work on that. We're actually leaving tomorrow again to have to see you for a couple of days. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. Thanks, man. I'll let you know next week how it went. Um, and I'll keep you in mind. I'll keep you as a uh, secret accountability partner. <laughs> um, anyway, last question, man. You just mentioned something that drew my attention as well. You were talking about you got the uh, Killer Dad Bot program. Um, and, and I was just wondering, man, because as I mentioned before, if you go to a gym or if you go find some workouts, they're, they're, they're always very generalized. However, I feel as a father, my goals and, and um, objectives with working out have changed, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to have the six pack, but that's not the most important thing. My most important thing is that I'm strong so I can lift up my kids or right. in the worst case scenario, I can pull them out from a dangerous situation um and also that i have the energy all day long right to to i'm awake energized to, to get them ready and, and um, give them that energy so they are all excited when they go to school and, and hopefully you know that comes a ripple effect towards all the children and, and teachers that they're getting contact with and then when i pick them up of course you know do have the energy during the day to work and then have the energy when i pick them up and can play with them and then I like to be really active with them. And I think everybody should, because it's, I, that's my personality. And I hope everybody agrees that it's tons of fun. I go nuts. I'm, I'm the biggest monkey in the monkey bar. Um, <laughs> that's just me. I, I like to enjoy that. I think everybody should um, be a, at least able to do that. And then of course, later on when they go to bed, they're still the wife, of course, that needs all the attention. And hopefully that leads in some more activity at night. Um, so you want to have energy for that as well, instead of being so tired and passed out. So yeah. can you please share a little bit, what's your system in regards to the Kill It Dad bot program and how does it work? And maybe even share with us where we can find it, how people can apply, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, no, um, it's actually a, a great question to finish up on. The, I'll touch on one thing. You made a good point, and this is why I have this program for the guys and that, for instance, my brother does my programs. Um, it's good. My brother actually pays to support my business. He does my programs. <laughs> um, it's like that's something that I really appreciate. But, um, you know, my brother kind of struggled to put on muscle mass. He's about, uh, so I'm, I turned 35, so he's 32. Um, and, you know, he struggled for a long time to put on muscle mass, and he never was a, a big squatter. He, you know, he never was, he was always a super slender, skinny guy. Um, Good-looking kid, always. 
And I would always tell him, like, look, you got to eat this way. You got to train this way. And he kind of would some way do it. And finally, he was like, okay, man, I'm going to listen to you. And he did it. And he put on about 15 pounds. So for the first time in his life, he's over 230 pounds. The biggest thing is, you know, my brother came back from some very serious injuries. Um, he took a horrible fall. He was actually at his gym working out. He um, fractured his uh, tibia. You know, has like a steel rod in his leg and he hit his head. He was severely concussed. Um, and so he was coming back from that. He also had a back surgery at a very young age, at, you know, in his mid twenties. So my brother, you know, from that stuff, he had a lot of setbacks. So now he's stronger than he's ever been. He weighs more than he's ever been. He looks better than he ever has. And it brings me back to this, this conversation that we had the other day, which is exactly what you, what you said. And he said, you know, it's crazy how good I feel and feel about myself, about how strong I am. And I don't care what you say, it's a good feeling when you just reach for something like a big gallon jug, you know, your girlfriend and your wife asks you to go pick something up or, or there's something that needs to be moved and it would normally take two people and you just pick it up. Everybody likes to be strong, you know, and it comes into play in a lot of different, different facets of life. So with the, with the Killer Dad Bod program, it's meant number one, hey, let's focus on getting you eating the right things so that way we can start to strip the fat away, but still fuel you enough so that you can get strong and so that you can perform these workouts. And then the workouts are all about 20 minutes, depending if you want to stretch them out like 30 minutes long, but they're short and sweet and they're straight to the point. And the whole purpose is, listen, you don't have all day to be in the gym. You know, I don't, I don't like to be in the gym for very long either. I mean, and I've, 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 I've owned gyms and, you know, I don't have anywhere to be. So I could just be in the gym all day. So, but, you know, the, the, the program's really meant to, uh, you know, put you in a position to where you can learn the things that it takes, again, so you can be sustainable and you can take them on and, and go with you. My programs aren't meant to trap you. So you need me for the next 10 years. It's meant to give you the, the tools and enable you with the ability to, to go forward and, and put that stuff into action. So I've actually got a link that people can kind of reach out to me and they can inquire to get more information on the programs. And then I can, uh, cause you know, some people might want to do the dad bod program, but they might be better suited for another program. And that's, that's something else also, I don't let just anyone join my programs. Um, if it's not a good fit for you, then I'm not, I'm going to try to send you in the direction of a program that I have that is, or, or maybe it's just not working with me in general. And I'll still give you a bunch of resources and, and suggest some people that might be a better fit for you. So, you know, some, some of my colleagues, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think that there's anything, um, better than feeling strong and, and feeling healthy and uh, being able to sustain that. So I figured I'd put a way a, put together a really good way to, to help, uh, to help those uh, dads out. Nice. Yeah. And I absolutely agree with you. It's so important. You mentioned picking up a bag. Uh, for me, it's picking up my kids. Um, you know, they're getting heavier and heavier. Um, but yeah, it's so important to be able to pick them up and have them on your shoulders and just be able to, to sustain that for as long as, and you know, as they want, instead of you being, Oh, it hurts. Oh, I can't anymore after like yeah, five yeah. minutes or not even be able to pick them up because whatever, um, because you can't, I'm not, of course, if you're injured, that that's something else. Um, but yeah, you, you should definitely work out. And I liked what you said as well earlier on saying, look, man, anybody that's saying, I don't want to be fit is absolutely talking bullshit. I to themselves and to everybody else. And I hope that people start realizing that being fit is the most important thing in your life that you could do. It's the biggest gift that you can uh, can give yourself. And it's actually kind of easy, especially if you have guys like you that have such amazing programs that people can join. And I love the fact that you mentioned, I hope people pick up on that, that you immediately mentioned like, look, maybe even though this is a program specifically made for fathers, maybe this program is not for you for whatever reason. And then I make sure that we have a program that fits with you and not just a generalized program. Oh, you're a dad. This is what you need. Oh, right. you're, you want to lose weight. This is what you need. No, no, no. Exactly. You, you, I love that. And that's so important. So I hope people pick up on that. We will make sure because a lot of people will watch this live interview as well. Not live. So the link will be underneath the video and you can check it out and you can get in contact with, with Marcus. What are the ways, Marcus, to, to finish off this live interview at the moment for fathers out there to get in contact with you if they have any questions from what they've heard so far from you? Because, man, I can say you've dropped amazing golden nuggets and I'm really grateful for that. However, maybe they have some different questions that I wasn't able to, to ask at the moment. Um, how can they get in contact with you? 
Yeah, for sure. So um, um, on Instagram, I'm uh, at the Watts guy, um, same way it sounds, uh, the Watts guy. And then on Facebook, um, my Facebook page is the Watts guy fitness. Um, on Twitter, not too, many, not too many people know me on Twitter, but on Twitter, it's the same thing at the Watts guy. And like I said, I, there's a link that you've got. I just put it, um, I just sent it to you, but that link, they can pretty much fill out an inquiry form that basically tells me what it is that they're trying to accomplish. And then at that point, we can kind of set up a conversation and just kind of go from there. I mean, maybe, you know, I offer free calls, so it might just be just giving you some tips on your nutrition and going forward from there. I also have a free download for nutrition and a free download for a workout guide. So I'll make sure that you have those ones too. And just anybody can get those and give you some, uh, some free stuff to kind of lead you along the way. Nice. Well, I really appreciate that. So maybe we went a little bit over an hour. I apologize for that. That's okay. No problem. Man. I appreciate that. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> Go get some micronutrients. Yeah. It's later there for you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's eight o'clock. So it's time for me to, get some dinner, um, but I really appreciate this. Um, I actually have more questions I could go on. Uh, probably another half an hour talking to you and, and trying to draw some more golden nuggets <laughs> from yeah, you yeah, to share if, more. If you, want, if you want, man, you can. we can get together some FAQs or something and we can just spit fire some questions. You know what I'm saying? Just, we, we, can, we can do that too, no problem. Awesome, man, awesome. I appreciate that. We'll definitely, I remember that. We'll definitely do that in the future. Um, just like you, I'm working with the 30 day challenge and trying to get out some extra content for the people. So I'm really busy with that. But as soon as we get that done, man, let, let's get in contact and set that up. I got all the links, so we will share all the links underneath again. And if you have any questions, get in contact with Marcus. I mean, as you can tell, he opens or he answers any question freely, which is absolutely amazing. So again, thanks. I wish everybody a very nice a fantastic, inspiring day, evening, morning, wherever you're at. Enjoy it. Are you still meeting up with your friends now that you're a father? Kids making you stress out. You got no time for yourself to work out, read, relax. Can you still remember the time you were hanging out with your friends, feeling energetic, happy, and confident? Spending time together and talking about your life and your crazy dreams. You're feeling alone now, don't you? No one to share your challenges with and you're just running around from one storm into the next. Well, it's time to change this now. Join me and the Brotherhood of Fearless Fathers to speak on a weekly basis with like-minded dads to crush your challenges, face your fears with determination, be held accountable and regain control of your life. If you want to become the hero your family needs you to be, then go to becomeafearlessfather.com slash brotherhood. Looking forward to seeing you on one of our next calls.